This is a video from Arch City Comics, I believe. Here, Arch City Comics is a lot of fun. So, uh, thanks. Go subscribe to Arch City Comics uh, if you enjoy this video. That's Yes, this is Art City Comics. Welcome, one and all. Please make sure you are subscribed and you've got that bell rung for notifications so you can stay up to date on all things Art City. So, the weekend is over and the numbers are in. And by all accounts, Birds of Prey did not do very well its opening weekend. Box Office Mojo here reports that uh, domestically, it brought in $33.25 million and internationally $46.5 million for a grand total of $79.75 million, a little below the estimated budget of $84.5 million. That is not very good. Um, on an investment, when Warner Brothers puts down $84.5 million into a movie, I'm sure they would like to see a little bit more of a return on their investment than what this movie is most likely going to see. Now, this is just the opening weekend, and these are not the final numbers. But generally, the numbers do not go up into the second week unless the reviews are just absolutely astounding, um, which these reviews really are not. Um, most of the good reviews are definitely biased and paid shills. Uh, all other accounts say that this movie was just mediocre. Uh, all around, which I'm pretty sure most of us knew going into it. Uh, we all kind of figured, just by looking at the promotional art and the trailer and everything being said, that this was not going to be a great movie. Um, so why did it do so bad? Well, all the excuses have come out of the woodwork, of course. Uh, there wasn't enough audience for this type of movie. The R rating uh, kept people away from it. Uh, and, of course, uh, misogyny. And uh, it's, it's the men's fault, of course. So, Birds of Prey fans and Punisher creator Jerry Conway blame the film's poor opening on men and misogyny. Oh, really? Go figure. Yep, it's the men's fault. It's the men's fault that nobody wanted to go see a crappy movie. Uh, so this article comes from Bounding Into Comics says, following the disappointing box office numbers for the opening weekend of Birds of Prey, fans of the film have taken to blaming the entirety of men rather than the overall production for the film's poor performance. Despite this film receiving generally positive reviews from critics of both genders almost across the board, fans were quick to accuse men of refusing to see the film because of their inherent misogyny. Wow. Isn't that something? Uh, they go on to show just a ton of tweets here uh, when Birds of Prey might flop at the box office because y'all hate women. Uh, white men really think they're doing something by not seeing Birds of Prey in theaters. Just say your dicks are small and you're afraid of seeing powerful women together on screen and go. Oh my god, hoes mad indeed. Uh, but it's not the cis white men that they're talking about. Uh, it just this goes on and on. They have all kinds of tweets listing and sh and showing just all the hate for white men uh, <laughs> that has come out. Uh, it's absolutely astounding. But the one that I really want to highlight highlight is the one that they uh, that they talk about in the title. Um, uh, oh yeah, this guy. Oh this dude. I've seen him around the Twitterverse. The women in Birds of Prey aren't sexy enough. Female-directed movies are bad. Get out of here with your misogyny. Man, that's, that's bullshit. I mean, yeah, they weren't sexy enough, but that doesn't have to do with the fact that it was just a bad movie. Um, it has nothing to do with who was involved. I didn't know that there was even a woman, a woman director behind this movie. I had no idea. Didn't care. It was just bad. Uh, but moving on down to, here we go, Jerry Conway. So, uh, bleeding, or Bonding Into Comics says here, uh, the scapegoat of a lack of sexualization was also put forth by Punisher co-creator Jerry Conway, who described the supposed lack of desire by, quote, young men to see the film as crass, horrible, and shallow. He also stated that the desexualizing of the team's members as in the abstract and politically, this is good. 
Um, so this is what uh, Jerry says here. I'm so disappointed by Birds of Prey box office and what it says about the male audience for superhero films. Here's my controversial take, don't hate me. The movie didn't pull teenage boys because Margot Robbie didn't want Harley Quinn to be sexualized as she was in Suicide Squad. It's horribly shallow. But there we are. I'll bet much of Harley's appeal for young men in Suicide Squad was the hypersexualization of her body in a mid breathed shirt and short shorts that emphasized her buttocks and legs. To her credit, Robbie wanted to attack that. She, she wanted to attack it. She destroyed it. The result was a complete desexualizing of Harley and birds. So much so that we see her in baggy overalls or baggy pajamas, etc. throughout. Her fellow birds are also desexualized in the abstract and politically. This is good. This is very good. But superhero movies unfortunately depend for a large part of their audience on young men. And without special powers or a truly mind-bending set of special effects, what would draw young men to see Birds of Prey if there's no uh, TNA? It's crass, horrible, and shallow very shallow. Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman were hits because they provided superhero powers, big special effects, and yeah, beautiful women who looked good in tight-fitting outfits. To her credit, Margot Robbie wanted to challenge the need for any of that. Well, to be honest with you, Jerry, um, Captain Marvel really didn't do so well, uh, and her costume was definitely not sexualized in any way. Um, it, it it suppressed any kind of boobage uh, that that Brie Larson had. Uh, Wonder Woman. I mean, yes, uh, Gal Gadot is a gorgeous woman, but her costume was not overly sexualized in any way. Um, they didn't like they didn't accentuate uh, her bust in any way. It was very true to what she looks like in the comic books, which is very important when you go into these uh, films uh, fans want to see what they get in the comics they want that translated onto the big screen they don't want you to deviate from the source material that's been proven time and time again I don't understand why people can't get that through their heads so Jerry goes on to say unfortunately what we what she may have proved who can say of one movie is that the male audience for superhero movies isn't as mature as we'd like to hope and the female audience isn't large enough to compensate oh draw well um yeah you you can't you cannot base these movies you cannot target your target demographic cannot be such a small fucking audience. I don't understand why people can't get that through their thick skulls. Yes, this was a third wave feminist movie about comic book characters. Your audience is pretty fucking small. You should be happy that you actually grossed the amount of movie that you the amount of money that you did for this movie. I mean, Christ. Bounty goes on to say, however, despite these Miss Anders excuses, various news outlets, including Deadline, Forbes, and Yahoo Entertainment, have attempted to analyze the reasons behind the film's poor showing and have not identified men or misogyny as a factor. In fact, men made up 53% of the total opening weekend audience, according to Deadline. They also reported that men were over 25, were a plurality of the audience with 33%. Most analysts cite the film's lack of Joker or Batman, massive deviation from the comic book source material, being a sequel to the atrocious Suicide Squad film, and R rating as some of the major causes behind the lackluster opening, as summarized by Deadline's Anthony DeLisandro. Um, Yeah, you pretty much nailed the head. You nailed it right on the head with all of that right there. Massive deviation from the comic book source material. Suicide Squad was shit. Our rating might have had something to do with it, but you can't blame that because look how well Deadpool and Logan and uh, most recently The Joker did at the box office with our ratings. So you really cannot blame the R rating as why this movie was bad. Why was this movie bad? 
People didn't want to see this. Why? Because this is what the characters look like. That is does not look like Victor Zaz. If you've read the comic books at all, Victor Zaz has he's bald, he doesn't have a beard, and he's got hash marks all over his skin from all the kills that he's had. Roman Sciotis, aka Black Mask, Ewan McGregor, he looks like a fucking douche. He looks absolutely douchey. That doesn't look like Black Mask at all. He looks like a fairy. Black Canary. That's a new one on me. At least the Black Canary in the uh, CW series looks like Black Canary. This is like some weird Elseworlds Black Canary. It doesn't even make any sense. And the Huntress. That's just a terrible costume. No, it's not sexy. It's pretty terrible. How are you going to fight crime? And Okay, the reason that superheroes have hide outfits is for mobility. You can't jump around and fight bad guys in loose and baggy clothes it just doesn't it doesn't work and then you've got the new looking harley quinn here uh in a in weird yellow overalls in a a pink i guess sports bra i'm not i'm not really 100 percent on that one but what happened to the the good old iconic black and red that when she was introduced in the animated batman series in the 90s that's what people want Harley Quinn to look like. I didn't like her look in Suicide Squad. I thought it was outlandish. I didn't like Joker's look in Suicide Squad either. Again, just a shit movie. But moving on to... This is supposed to be Cassie Kane. Like, what is this promotional image supposed to be? Like, what is up with this huge fucking diamond that she's got in her pocket? And what's up... Why Why is, it, is that a... Is that a beaver? A beaver in a, in a in a fucking tutu? What is this shit? This is just not appealing to anybody. And then you have Renee Montoya, which this is an interesting look here. Um, I don't really know what that's about. Uh, I don't know. That's ugh, that's fucking terrible. But this is why this movie did not do well is poor character design um poor direction regardless if it was a male or a female who directed the damn movie and just just lackluster interest nobody wanted this movie i mean you've got good characters i'm not sure what like why why harley quinn what i mean she has nothing to do with the birds of prey it's kind of she kind of got shoehorned in there it also didn't help that most of the marketing for this movie, um, done by Ewan McGregor, on literally almost every one of his interviews, he quoted it as a feminist film that tackled misogyny. Nobody really wants to spend their hard-earned money to see a movie like that, especially if it's supposed to be a comic book movie. Comic books are supposed to be aspirational. They're supposed to make us feel good and strive to be better. And by shoving this third wave feminist bullshit down audiences' throats, you're not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere. This isn't uh, this isn't some big win for females anywhere. If, in fact, I feel like it's a step backwards. This article from Mashable says, "Ignore the negative hype. Birds of Prey isn't a box office disaster." Um, no, it really is a box office disaster. Uh, in every aspects of the term it's a box office disaster but you've got a there's just tons of these articles out there making excuses and saying that it it's not as it's not as bad it's not as bad as they say i mean 33 uh, million dollars is good for for february um no uh it it's just it's all it's bad all across the board this movie the opening was lower than 2011's Green Lantern, which again was a terrible adaptation of a DC property. Now, it exists outside of the new DCEU, um, thankfully. Ryan Reynolds was trash in it. Uh, the story was trash. The, oh, God, just the design of Parallax, the, the CGI suit, was it, this was all bad. And 
This was even in 2011. So you, you take into account that movie prices have risen quite a bit in the last nine years. Um, so more people went to go see Green Lantern than they did this Birds of Prey trash. What does that tell you? Birds of Prey is the lowest start for DC film since 2010's Jonah Hex, which only brought in $10.9 million globally. DC does not have a very good track record with their movies uh, whatsoever. They just cannot get on the right step. They can't get on that same level that Marvel is on. And it's very unfortunate because... I have always said that DC Comics have always been a step above Marvel Comics uh, in quality, in content, all of the above. Even, even nowadays, with, uh, with all of the left-wing agenda being stuffed down um, people's throats, the DC Comics are still better than what Marvel puts out. But they just cannot capture that same magic that Marvel was able to with their with their uh with their mcu um and it's it's a shame i wish they would just pull their head out of their ass and put out some good quality content i mean you know i mean it's not all been bad shazam uh was a hit joker was a hit uh aquaman was a hit wonder woman did good now the new wonder woman 84 coming out i have no idea uh, how that's gonna do because it already looks like it's going down the same path that, they're, that they tried to take Birds of Prey down. They're going to make it into some feminist agenda. The, the new outfit for Wonder Woman, She's they've completely redone her outfit. It looks terrible. It deviates from source material, which we already said is a bad idea. So who knows? Who knows? But uh, let me know what you guys think. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, sound off in the comments. Why do you think Birds of Prey did so terribly because i obviously i have no say in this as a uh, as a cis white male i don't i don't get to speak out on this matter because i don't have a vagina uh so if you've got a vagina please let me know peace